Welcome to the Ignite Podcast, the only healthcare marketing podcast that digs into the digital strategies and tactics that help you accelerate growth. Each week, Cardinals experts explore innovative ways to build your digital presence and attract more patients. Buckle up for another episode of Ignite. Well, today we are in for a treat, everybody. Thanks for listening to Ignite. I am Alex Membrio, still CEO of Cardinal Digital Marketing. Somehow we have the very brilliant technical SEO wizard, the best in the country, Mr. John McAlpin. John, welcome to Ignite. Thanks for having me back. All right. We are going to record a session that is very near and dear to John's heart because uh, he wants to he wants to make sure everybody knows all the tips and tricks around how to build a website that ranks very well for SEO is not just aesthetically pleasing. He cares about it because he sees a lot of clients coming to us in bad shape because they didn't build the website to rank. They built it to look beautiful. And beauty only gets you so far, I'm told. All right, John, welcome to Ignite. Let's get into it. So we saw in 2021, consistent trend we've seen in our healthcare orgs is that they're investing in their digital presence, right? So if you're considering a new website in 2022, should it just be great for the user experience or does it also need to take SEO into account and can your web design agency just do the SEO foundation? Obviously, I'm leading into an answer there, but tell us what you think. Yeah, you got to be careful with what your agency's focus is. They may be like a web design, web build focus agency and they say, oh, and we consider SEO. Um, that's a very broad statement. You need to get the details on what they're considering here. Um, yeah, like you really do need to have an actual SEO audit your site at various stages. I'm talking even starting as early as the wireframes and mockups and audit it before it goes live. Yeah. And so should the web design firm be working alongside an SEO company? Should you? Absolutely. Yeah. We do it all the time. We have clients that, you know, they want to uh, work with a specific agency that they like for web builds but they'll have us consult and we work alongside, we set up, you know, very fluid relationships between these other agencies that would say, Hey, you know, involve us at these key stages. We're going to provide you key documents and we have a great working relationship. There's no reason you can't use multiple agencies for the same project. That's right. And you really, <clears throat> specialization is the name of the game. We're not going to harp on this too much, but there is no agency under 300 people that is great at both design and SEO. I haven't seen it yet. And most healthcare orgs are not big enough to work with one of those mega lists from a holding company. So work with specialist agencies. All right, let's talk about website structure. What kind of like architectural principles do you look for? Like foundation. If I only get some things right, the technical foundation is the most important, right? Like what what do I need to do right when I build this bad boy? Right. So a lot of the times that people are going to build a website, they're trying to solve a specific problem they're currently having. That should be your first step. But don't get too boxed in to what your current issues are. Think about the future. Think about your dream website. What are the key things you wish your website had? And I have six principles to keep in mind that help make sure, and if, as long as you're achieving these six principles and you can check them off, you will have your dream website is make sure it's organized. Meaning people can easily like you can, it, every piece of content you have has a place. That phrase, a place for everything and everything in its place. Keep it organized. Uh, make sure everything's discoverable. You don't want your users going five clicks deep just to find the key information. Make sure it's unique. That's where that UX and design comes into play. You don't want to look like all your competitors. You want to have something that stands out and is memorable. We want to make sure things are linkable, that you have natural linking opportunities within your website and that you have content worth linking to for your link building campaigns. Uh, number five is make sure that your content is consistent, consistent branding, consistent messaging and theme. And also, always, the number one rule is make sure every page delivers some sort of value. And that's the that is get rid of all those pages that aren't delivering value to your users. Yeah. And you know what the latest algorithm update, John, I uh, personally saw, I've done so much research on it and Google is really prioritizing niche websites, even if the website content's a little thin. So the more niche you are consistent in your content, like you just mentioned, like stick to a theme, the whole website should be about that theme. Don't try to be all things for all 
people, if you're a provider and you're really great at something, just like harp on that symptoms, diseases, treatments, like make everything about that. Don't try to be the catch all provider group. Like it's not working. Google doesn't rank it very well. So let's talk. All right. So we get those six principles in place. And are there any like technologies you'd really highly recommend? We have websites coming to us with all kinds of crazy CMSs and stuff. Like give us the foundational technologies you like to see. So we want to talk about a couple things. One, uh, think about three different approaches. You want to have something that's easy for you to use and is very efficient. That usually starts with your CMS, your content management system. Uh, if you're using something like a WYSIWYG, and that's a term we're going to talk about is WYSIWYG, which stands for what you see is what you get, also known as a drag-and-drop web builder. Uh, think about your Wix, your Squarespace. Those are WYSIWYGs. Um, those aren't very efficient for updating content at scale. Think about a CMS that's really scalable, like WordPress, the number one CMS in the world. There's a reason it has the largest market share. Um, there are some other CMSs that you can use, um, but there's pros and cons to each one. Um, the most robust and flexible and adaptable would be WordPress. It's usually what we recommend and what most SEOs recommend. Next is you need to have something to support it, which would be your web host. Um, make sure that they take daily backups. Make sure they have the top of the line security. Make sure, like Alex talked about specialists, look for a specialist that specializes in your CMS. Don't go for a GoDaddy host that does it all. Like Alex said, someone that does it all is never going to be the greatest. It's like the master, of, uh, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. Um, so if you're going WordPress, go with someone like Flywheel, WP Engine, Kinsta. Those three are specialists in WordPress. And then number three, make sure that you have speed and security for your website. Look for a CDN that offers top of the line speed and security like Cloudflare. Um, think about things like uh, D, uh, mitigating bot abuse and, and mitigating DDoS attacks and making sure that you have something that Cloudflare offers called always up. So if your server goes down, users can still get to your website and take action. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Um, it not only needs to function well with WordPress CMS, but all of it ties in a speed, right? Like making sure not using the WYSIWYG thing and the templates are built out appropriately and then Flywheel's fast, Cloudflare helps make it more fast and more secure. Fast, fast, fast. Name of the game these days, John? Fast speed, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, and if you follow even the six principles I covered earlier, oftentimes speed will be a result of that. Mm -hmm. That's true, the architectural foundation. With any of your websites, make sure you have Search Console connected. Oftentimes, the clients come to us and say, yeah, we use Google Analytics a lot. No, Search Console. It's the only, it's a really the point of truth on a lot of SEO related things. And you have Core Web Vitals in there, page experience. Google will tell you which pages are slow and why. It is no longer ignorable. And if you build a website not following what John said with his technology, technological and architectural foundations, it will be slow. It will drag and your rankings are going to get crushed. Let's talk about UX a little bit, John. So you talked a little bit about architecture and technology. Can we put sliders and fancy UX stuff because it's going to help people convert and see our video and personality? What, 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 tell us some tips and tricks, what to avoid, what to do. I mean, we see a lot of websites using very old school UX principles. Like you said, sliders. Um, Sliders are out, people. Uh, no one's using them. Uh, studies have shown that users aren't staying around for the automated sliders. They're not clicking through. People don't interact with sliders anymore. And not only that, they can slow down your website and they can be really buggy. We have a lot of clients using sliders that are extremely buggy. Um, that, meaning that when you're loading the web page, things shift around and they break and there's weird padding issues. A lot of issues with sliders nowadays. Um, Animation, flash, not, no longer supported. Um, really keep it simple as the name of the game and work with experienced UX and CRO professionals to identify what's actually driving conversion. Because any kind of flash or design elements you add need to be adding value and at the end of the day, driving more conversions. Isn't CRO just for paid media campaigns? Absolutely. That's for everything. You don't even need to be SEO. Everyone needs CRO to some extent. If your goal is to convert someone to take an action, you need CRO. Okay. Does video still have a place or it bogs things down too much? Absolutely. But use it tactfully. Don't do too much video. Don't overwhelm your, uh, your users. Make sure it, it supplements and adds to y your content. 
Let's say I'm not a huge provider group with lots of resources and in-house marketing department, or maybe I have one digital marketing director or one marketing director. How can I get all this done? Like, John, what do I go look for or on Upwork? Do I have to get an agency? Is there a cheaper way to do it with freelancer? What, how do I get all this done? The website architecture. Let's talk about website architecture, site speed, all that stuff first. How do I get that done? I mean... Oftentimes, agencies are always the way to go because you kind of have that all-in-one package. You're not you're saving a lot of costs with hiring in-house. Um, but you know, sometimes it, it's as simple as going back to the drawing board and starting small. Write it down on a piece of paper and think about how you would want to uh, organize your website and frame it all out. And then bring these ideas to an agency and say, "This is where my head is at," and they can help guide you to the right spot. And a lot of times the goal of an agency is to drive down future costs and making sure that things are scalable so that it's easy to just add in new elements over time and you're not constantly having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to go back to the drawing board. Driving down future costs, one client at a time. I've never heard that, but I love that. I'm going to use that more. Um, and if you can't afford an agency, there are site speed people. There are great hosting people. There are all of those on Upwork.com. Go hire a very... Try to get an expensive freelancer. The cheap ones are exactly, you get what you pay for. But try to get a really expensive freelancer if you just want to do one thing, can't afford an agency, don't need one yet. Lots of great people there on for site speed. UX, more complicated, right? Because we need someone that's creative and analytical. That one's harder for me to think to freelance. Wouldn't you think? I don't know. Oh, yeah. And I mean, you're going to have people say that, you know, our UX is data driven. You don't want data driven, you want data influenced. You don't need to go back to the data. Sometimes it takes some intuition. And data is going to give you some hints, but you need someone who's creative and has that intuition that is influenced by data, but they don't rely on it. They rely on what they feel works, and it's going to appeal to users. Data influenced. I like it. I like it. I've been SEO influenced by you for the last 15 minutes. Thank you so much, Don. You guys heard everything about how to build a website correctly so it's not just pretty, but it also... Runs fast too, works fast too, ranks well, most importantly. John, thanks for joining us on Ignite. Thanks for having me back. Thanks for listening to this episode of Ignite. Interested in keeping up with the latest trends in healthcare marketing? Subscribe to our podcast and leave a rating and review. For more healthcare marketing tips, visit our blog at cardinaldigitalmarketing.com.